JJ the CPA here. I want to focus in on what I believe is going to be required for the Paycheck um, Protection Program loan. Uh, and the reason I want to go through this is that um, I have uh, been telling clients about this, you, and I'm glad that, I mean, I'm in the same spot as you. Boy, let's get ready. We don't want these, you know, uh, loan uh, available loans to run out. Let's get ready to rock. Let's find the banks that are ready to get with it. Get with it. Um, and you know, Thursday morning, um, I contacted bankers, and a number of them actually didn't even know what I was talking about. So that's more just to say that you know the banks are catching up, and you know, bankers um, are just following on what they know until they really get more information. And so clients that are reaching out to the banks, because I've, I've had um, a request to clients, you know, it's like, well, you know, ask your bank if they're going to do these. Um, banks that are going to do them, right, are probably waiting uh, to hear what it is that's required. And so bankers are, you know, they're doing what they know. And for SBA loans, you're needing tax returns and financials and a lot of other information, um, you know, year-to-date financials. Uh, and so it's understandable that the banks are, um, you know, kind of just following the protocols. Like, well, hey, while we are waiting for the details, start gathering this stuff up so that we can get after it. Um, some banks, though, are taking a little um, a, a, a rude approach. And so I've got a couple of clients I've been going back and forth. Um, which is more to say with uh, with their bankers, and you know maybe one's not rude, but they're just they're just being hard headed. And um, so here's the deal. Here's the bottom line. Whatever the government's going to require, um, it's going to be here's what it is. Okay, it won't be per bank. Now, if a bank decides that they want to put more requirements on it, that's fine too. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to play that game, uh, I'll just send my client somewhere that they're not going to, they're not going to be working with a bank, um, that's going to require more than what the government's required. And so I'm going to walk through, I'm going to pull up graphics. I'm going to pull up the section. Um, I'm going to follow the law. So you're not going to hear my opinions. Um, and in the body of this YouTube video, um, I have a link, two links to the official government website to see and the person who's viewing can see for themselves. They can follow along to this. They'd be able to pull that law from the government's website that shows that it is the final law or it is the final wording and it is the law. And so there's two links. One of them is to an interactive uh, review of the, of the law and the other is to the PDF. They're both links to the government. And I'm going to also put in the body the, let's see, I'm going to go through, and it's going to go quick, but I'm going to go through one, two, three, four, five sections. So I've got them in order. I'm going to pull up graphics, and um, but I'm going to list those sections specifically in the body of the email. And maybe every banker in America will take a look at this this weekend, and that'd be cool because then I'll get a bunch of views on this uh, video. Probably, this is really probably all I'm going to get out of it. Um, but I am going to use this video that if uh, you have a banker that's got you convinced that you need to pull together documents, you know, I welcome uh, you. If you're not a client, you know, hopefully you already have these. If you are a client, uh, I'd welcome you to go ahead and pull those documents together with all due respect. Um, right now on March 28th, um, we're in, what is it, shelter and home or whatever. Um, our offices are closed. I've got um, basically three staff this tax season. They're helping me in the office. Um, we got one that's high risk. We got one that's home not feeling well. Um, I'm at the tail end of my quarantine. Um, I've been waiting for tax returns um, to be um, I I've been waiting to get into tax returns because I've been waiting for this, you know, the law to come down. So we had the um, first uh, Families First Coronavirus Act, and then we also have uh, this uh, CARES Act that at the time I'm, I'm shooting this, uh, it probably was signed into law uh, maybe 24 hours ago. 
Um, so I've been waiting for these because if there's any provisions, which we do have a number of them, that are going to affect what we're getting ready to file, uh, then we want to make sure that um, we were taking advantage of that. Uh, the other aspect I'm just going to point out is that you know the purpose of the Paycheck Protection Program is to immediately and quickly get money into the employer's hands so that you are able to um, get your employees paid, get back on the payroll. It's, uh, you know, I, I did a video yesterday and it's, think of it as, um, you know, the ice, the ice cream truck man, okay? They're coming down the street and they're just throwing dollars out, okay? Why? so you can hurry and take care of things. And so um, it's not possible that this is my, this is why I know that that's not supposed to work this way, uh, but it's not possible that the government is going to expect the following, three years of tax returns, including 19, and year-to-date financials, okay? The first thing is um, we don't have, and I mean in America, all the business returns done, not even possible. I have business returns done. There's another room that I don't have done. I'm either waiting on something uh, from a third party or whatever the case is. They're not done. That's That has nothing to do with me. It's just that's a, most business returns are filed between January 1st and September 15th. The other aspect for year-to-date financials, okay? Year-to-date financials, we're at the end of March. We're talking about two months, okay? Um, the amount of time that that would require, not even just for me, but to pull it together and you know check mark, do we have this, do we have this, do we have this, um, would be like your house is on fire and what you're having to do is run through a bunch of hoops uh, to be able to get the fire hose, okay? Uh, the government's just wanting to give you the fire hose, right? Uh, they're not wanting you to measure it and then come out and, and prove to them why you need the fire hose with all of these documents. You're going to just say that you need it. So um, I will put in the in the email, if, if uh, I'll put in the body of this, that if you're forwarding this, um, you I'll put in there that at minute eight, uh, if you don't care who I am and you don't need to hear all the extra and you just want to go straight to the no nonsense following through it, um, it's going to be at minute eight. So you can forward it and say, you know, this guy's just going on and on for eight minutes. Um, but this is more of a message to, to clients. But, um, you know, I, if I have, you know, nearly a thousand clients that would need to be pulled together in three years in financials, that's over 10,000, you know, documents we might be looking at. And no one's in the office. One person's sick. I'm behind on tax returns, which is all just to say, until it is in black and white, okay, that this is actually what's needed. And I've got a short list of bankers that I will trust what they tell me um, when they get the official word. So until we get that, I, I'm not going to be able to pull together documents, okay? And, and, I, and I mean that with all due respect. And, and the reason that you're now raring to go is because um, I told you to get raring to go, right? So you're doing exactly what I want you to do, which is be ready to rock. And with JJ the CPA, we're ahead of the curve. Hopefully you already see that, right? And I get that now we're in a panic, okay? And in the sense of, wow, this is so close. We're gonna get this relief, here we go. And now what's happening is I have a handful of clients that now they're not listening to me anymore, which is okay. They're listening to their banker that holds strings, okay? Not only, I'm saying that in a bad way, but they're hold strings, okay? And so they're like, well, you know, I, I wanna be compliant or, well, don't I have to get this loan with them? And um, so at the end of the day, okay, um, if you have a bank that's not with it, if you have a bank that's requiring more than what's required, we don't have time for that. Um, and what we don't have time for, we, meaning you and me, we don't have time right now to pull together a bunch of documents that we don't need or I, I feel wholeheartedly we're not going to need. But when it's then time to do it, somehow um, between me and my staff, we will put on uh, COVID-19 gear and make our way to the, 
to the office and we'll find a way to make a 24 hour day turn into a 48 hour day and we will get you what you need when we know exactly what it is that you need. But now I'm gonna walk through this section. So it's actually at minute 10, if you're forwarding this, I'll put it in there at minute 10 is we will go through the no nonsense. So thanks for listening. Um, but uh, the reason for this as well is that every time I'm now gonna get these emails, I'm just gonna forward this um, video because uh, I love you, but with everything that's going on and it's pressed, I can't have this conversation over and over and over and over and over the same one just because the banker is saying we need these things. I don't believe we do. When we get it in black and white, now we're ready to rock. Okay, it's actually gonna be minute 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and even introduce myself here at minute 11. You ready? And uh, we'll have some graphics going up. So thanks for listening to all that. And uh, here we go. All right, JJ the CPA here. I wanna walk through where we are on, let's see, March 28th as it relates to the um, Paychecks Protection Program loans in the CARES Act. Um, and on March 28th, uh, I've got a number of clients that are raring to go because uh, I let them know about this, that it was coming down the pike. Everybody's anxious. We wanna make sure that the loans are getting taken out as soon as possible. Um, but banks are doing what they do best, which is wanting to get the clients prepared. And so what I'm hearing over and over and over from the clients that I've said, hey, check with your bank and see if they're doing this is, okay, well, hey, we need three years of this and three years of that. And I'm saying, hey, you know, let's just wait. So I've got another, a number of banks that for whatever reason, they're taking this to the nth degree and I don't have time to, um, I, don't, I don't have time for arguing with a banker and I don't have time to educate bankers right now, no, with all due respect, because my job is to take care of my client. And while I understand that now a banker may say, well, I need this and I need this, they don't really know, okay? No one really knows technically, but guess what? We're gonna go through the law here, okay? So I've got a link uh, in the body of this YouTube video to the actual law from the government's website. There's two links. They're both the exact same, but one's a PDF and then one's an interactive. They are both from the government. Uh, we are gonna focus in on section 1102, which is the first section, okay? Don't even have to go that many pages uh, into the PDF. I'm gonna pull up some graphics um, and then also in the body of the YouTube video, um, I will list each one of these sections. Um, so let's walk through it and um, so that I can see exactly what I'm pulling up at the time. Uh, I'll be looking here at my phone. So the first thing we wanna know is that when we're looking at section 1102, um, this is the Paychecks Protection Program. Um, and when you're looking at 800 pages, okay, the thing to know is that the 800 pages is not all of the Payment Protection Program, only section 1102 is, okay? There might be some other inferences to it, um, so what we first need to know is that when someone's looking at a law, we're looking at section 1102. We're looking at what's contained in 1102. In this uh, CARES Act, it does talk about the SBA COVID-19 disaster loans that have been expanded. Um, it does talk about grants. It talks about the EIDL. It talks about the uh, Women's Business Center uh, program and a number of other things. Uh, there's a section where it lists all the appropriations, so it's going to list all these things, including the Paychecks Program, uh, P Protection Program. Uh, but then each one of these has its own section. So the reason I'm saying that is that we can't just pick a section and say, oh, well, it says here that we have to do this, so it must apply to Section 1102. And I'm going to actually show you how 1102 is specifically excluded from those other sections. So stated another way, um, you all know this, right? We can't take a verse from Psalms or Genesis and pack it in with Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John and then say, see, okay? You, you have to look at it face value here in the sense of we're talking about section 1102. Now, next, uh, we're gonna go to, and if you're, if you're scrolling along, I'm, bull I'm pulling up a graphic here, but if you're scrolling along, uh, doing these in order, section 
F2, which is two I's and then a uppercase I, okay? So I'm putting that on the screen. I'm putting this, and you'll just be able to follow along. There's 1102 A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? And when you get to F, you'll just, boom, follow this down. And this talks about the banking authority. Um, and so this is where we, we, in my opinion, we don't need the banks to go uh, wild in the sense that they're just getting full authority, okay? This says, for purposes of making covered loans, for the purposes of described in clause one, a lender, okay, We're talking about 1102, a lender approved to make loans under this subsection shall be deemed to have delegated authority by the administrator to make and approve covered loans uh, subject to the provisions of this paragraph, okay? It's not saying anywhere else, it's saying this paragraph, okay? So what it's saying is, hey, if you're an approved lender, bada boom, bada bing, it's approved, you approve it. Now, here's what I know is that the bank will say, okay, well, but if we're given the money, um, we're gonna need to approve it. Good for you, okay? But these loans specifically have a ton of guarantees, they have forgiveness, uh, the bank's basically a facilitator. So if the bank doesn't understand that, then they're gonna lose out. Um, but really what this is saying is that the bank already has the authority. Boom, you have the authority, approve it, move on. Now, let's go to uh, section 1102G. Here are the borrower's requirements, okay? Borrower's requirements four things. It's uh, basically the eligible recipient applying for a covered loan shall make a good faith certification. Okay. They have uncertain economic events. Number one, they acknowledge the funds will be used to retain workers. Number two, number three, the eligible recipient does not have an application pending for a loan under other subsections. Okay. That would be the other loan. So we'll talk about that in other videos. And four, uh, during the period from beginning February 15, 2020, ending 12 31 2020, that eligible recipient has not received amounts under subsection for the same purpose, duplicative amounts applied uh, in the covered loan. Basically, you're just saying whether it's before or now or after, you're not getting a loan to cover these same expenses. So that's the borrower requirements. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, we know that this may just say, hey, here's the, here's the requirements. So you gotta do all these other things and then you also have to do this. There's nowhere though is it's showing that we have to do all these other things, okay? Now, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to section 1106, okay? We've moved out of section 1102. We're moving into 1106 and so the, the key is we've moved now to another boat, okay? We've moved to another boat. What boat are we on? The boat is now about the forgiveness, okay? So in 1106E, it says application, okay? You would think it just makes sense, like, oh, application, so this is at the beginning, okay? What this is talking about for application of forgiveness, you cannot make the application for forgiveness before you get the loan, okay? You make application for the loan, you get the loan proceeds, okay? And then you're gonna make an application to have the loan forgiven to the extent of the qualified expenses during a covered period, which is eight weeks after the loan's obtained, okay? So when it talks about application, okay, an eligible recipient seeking loan forgiveness under this section shall submit to the lender that is servicing the covered loan, blah, 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 video, uh, 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 documents and payroll reports and, check copies and receipts, okay? So I'm not at all saying that we're not gonna eventually, um, that we're never gonna have to provide documentation to the bank, but it's on the backside. Because here, th th this is really how this works, okay? The government's basically saying, hey, <laughs> here you go, all right? Now, if you take money and you don't have those circumstances, then in essence, you've taken it incorrectly, okay? So if, if, if you're chomping at the bit for the money, but you don't qualify for it because you're not in economic hardship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, 
then uh, you don't even meet the qualifications on the front end. Now, I did have a quick question from somebody who said, hey, if I have a line of credit, does that disqualify me? No. Disqualifying would be that you don't, the, you don't believe you have an economic distress. So if you think I'm cool, I'm good, I'm gonna get the loan proceeds and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be able to upgrade my boat, okay? You're not in economic position to take the loan, okay? Follow me on that. Now on the back side, okay, on the back side is if you want the loan forgiven or a portion of it, now you're applying, now you're bringing documents, now you're pulling together information to the bank that's covering the loan to say, hey, here's how I spent my money, and to this extent, then it should be forgiven. And that's when there's gonna be, in essence, all of the documentation coming into play. And to the extent that the uh, loan proceeds were not used for qualified expenses, well then the person who took the money is gonna now have to pay it back, okay? And there's you know interest on that and uh, deferred payments. It's over ten years and all that good stuff. So if somebody were to take a loan and they actually you know didn't qualify for it and they didn't have all the qualified expenses, then the government's going to get uh, their money back in essence. So when you see application and then you see a list of documents, um, if if the bank's just jumping to conclusions and just skimming and going, oh, see right here, we need these documents. Well, it's talking about when it's time for the forgiveness. Now we're gonna go uh, to uh, the last section that we're gonna talk about, which is section 1112, uh, subsidy for certain loan payments. Uh, so in uh, 1112, uh, it uh, talks about the term covered loans means a loan that is guaranteed, guaranteed by the administration, section 7A of Small Business Act, blah, 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 okay? So I don't know if, and I'm just having fun, but so I don't know if bankers just like throwing around, it's kind of like, you know, CPA going, you know, hey, under code section, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so bankers are saying, hey, you know, it's a 7A loan, so sorry, gonna need all this, okay? Well, let's do this, please. We're in 1112A1A2, okay? It's up on the screen, here's the graphic. It's saying that in this section, the term covered loans means loans that are guaranteed by the administration under 7A of the Small Business Act, including a loan made under the blah, 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 and excluding a loan made under paragraph 36 of section 7A, is added by section 1102. So this loan does fall under paragraph 36, section 7A. But what's syndicating here is that if you're looking at that and you're looking at the loan of the payment, uh, the, the Paychecks uh, Protection Program, okay, it's saying that that has been added to loans that are, are technically falling under this, okay? But 1102 is excluded. So let me just say that in plain English. It's saying that for section 1112, section 1102 is not included. It says right there, excluding. So in 1112, which has been, um, you know, a couple of banks have, you know, just been, you know, throwing that up at, up in the emails and, you know, one of them just, you know, basically saying, I don't know anything about banking law and all that stuff. And I, I probably don't. I've been practicing for 27 years. Um, I know exactly what it takes for someone to get a loan and all the documents that are required. Um, but, you know, this is a, this is a completely different animal. Um, and so anyways, bottom line is, is that it's saying that code section 1112 doesn't apply. And basically, um, when you're looking at this for certain loan payments, um, you know, that are guaranteed, et cetera. Uh, it's saying that it's excluding a loan made under paragraph 7A, uh, th paragraph 36 of se section 7A is added by section 1102. So, you know, for, uh, you know, the bankers that are watching, awesome, appreciate you watching. And, you know, you may go back and look at it. Um, here's the thing, I, the reason for the video is I'm, I'm not gonna be able to entertain any more discussions and back and forth emails um, and so I'll just send this email to any client that doesn't see it. And I'll just say, please watch and uh, send it to your banker. And, and all I'm saying right now is that 
on March 28th until it is black and white. And I don't mean per the banker and per an email from the banker and my banker said, and my banker's been doing this for 35 years. I wanna see it in black and white because one of the things that I'm doing and I've had other CPAs um, across the nation come to me and they're saying, hey, where are you getting your information? Directly from the law. Directly from the law. Nowhere in here does it say three years of this and this and this and this for section 1102, period, the end. If you're trying to find a way that it applies, no problem, I don't wanna hear about it. And here's why. Just show me what the government is going to require. Show me the document. I don't need another interpretation of what I've already interpreted. And all this is to say, maybe this is a mute point in eight days or in the next 72 hours, but until we have it known, I, with all due respect, I'm not going to be gathering up documents and trying to put together a package that the bank is saying that they need when I don't believe that is the case. Now, if you're getting one of these loans and you're gonna need my help at the end for the forgiveness, we're gonna have time to do that. It's gonna be later in the year. We'll pull everything together. I won't be able to do it for free um, or you can pull everything together and get it to the bank and all that good stuff. Um, but this is just more to say and, and, and kind of put it out there that when you look at section 1102, which, in, which covers the uh, paychecks, uh, uh, paycheck protection program, and you look at um, 1102F, and you look at 1102G, and you look at 1106E, and you look at section 1112A, here's what I think it is basically, is the bank is of course gonna need to verify uh, that you're an eligible borrower, but not a worthy one. There's no collateral, there's no guarantees. You don't have to smell right, you don't have to look right, you don't have to be best friends. Uh, this is gonna be an ATM machine transaction, okay? So when you go to an ATM machine and it says a bank on the, on the front of it that's not your bank, when you open it up uh, and you wanna take cash out, nowhere on there does it say submit three years of tax returns before we give you cash out of this ATM machine. Boom, ATM machine. And what's better than this is that there's no fees associated with it. This is meant literally for the business owner to get this money in 48 hours. Not 48 hours after they somehow got 2019 tax returns done, regardless of all the crisis, okay? Regardless of the fact that CPA firms across the nation are closed, regardless of the fact that people have COVID-19 right now and symptoms and are out. But, but regardless of that, we're gonna need all those documents and then 48 hours, you are going to get your loan. Not possible that that is how this is supposed to work. And the reason I get so emotional about it is that I have clients that need this money. Now, if I have to spend time pulling together documents at 2 a.m., bringing in my six staff, we will do it, okay? I will pull documents until my fingers are bleeding if that is what we need and I will do it stat and take no time to sleep for entire time until we pull that together. But I am not going to do that until it is absolutely proven to me that that is exactly what is needed because it can't be the case, can't be. So is this too good to be true? Yes, but think of this, okay? Think of this. You're getting a loan that you don't have to potentially pay back. What? What? This isn't a regular loan. It's not a regular loan because in essence, it's not a loan at all. And a client said, this is basically a gift from the government to pay your employees in rent and utilities. So for banks to now say, well, I'm gonna, whoa, 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 hold on, okay? I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna get you that fire hose because I'm gonna need this before I get you a fire hose. I don't have patience for that because I have clients that are in need two weeks ago, one week ago, yesterday, that are pulling their hair out, trying to figure out how they're gonna make it, okay? 
And if I have a bank that's now using that fear to have my client pull together documents that nowhere in this law is required, we're not doing it because you know what I need my clients doing? Focusing in on making money, taking care of themselves, taking care of their family and assessing, not in a panic, trying to run around and get all this information together, okay? And I'll tell you this right now, okay? I have bankers lined up and they're gonna do exactly what's required. And I tell you right now, I've got three on the short list. And basically, if you're a client of mine, I'm just gonna say, hey, let's just go here, here, or here, okay? And here's why, I'm gonna know exactly their process, I'm gonna know their contact, I'm gonna know their who you contact, what you need to email, how they want this or how they want that. I mean, it should be the same, right? But it might be this person does it through a portal, this one's through an email, this one you drop it by. I'm gonna know that with those three banks so that you're just able to go, hey, and you get to walk in and you say, hey, I'm a client of JJ the CPA, and they go, and you get your money, in 48 hours. I'm not gonna have time to work with the bank that's gonna say, well, we're gonna need this, and you know, I understand. I'm not gonna even talk to them. I don't have time for it. My clients don't have time for it, okay? So I kinda want my clients to be ready that I'm just gonna send you to who knows what the heck they're doing here. And if you wanna do it with your best friend that's at a bank that's not in the know, then you can do that, but I'm not gonna play their game and put together documents that you don't need to put together because there is gonna be something that is needed for the banks that we're dealing with, something, okay? Now, it starts with most likely a payroll calculation. Now, here's the thing, I'm already ahead. If you're a client of Alliant, I've already been in touch with them and they have already pulled together the numbers that we need on the payroll. Done. Done. How much is the payroll? Got it. Done. That's all that's needed here. And for you to say, I got an economic problem. I'm going to use the money to pay people. I don't have another loan. And whatever is not forgiven, I'm going to pay back. Check, 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 check. Get my money. How do you know how much? Boom, 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 boom. And then you're getting your money. Boy, I, I, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I had a, I had a stiff drink before I did this because I, I just feel strongly about it in the sense of for my client and I don't need my clients pulling crap together that they don't need to pull together. And I love my clients and I want them to feel better. And the way that a client's feeling better here three of them today is, but can you get the information? But can you get the information? But you can get the information. And I understand that that may contribute to the client feeling better. And it sounds terrible, but I'm a tax preparer. Okay. I'm not a, I don't get loans for people. I'm letting people know about this, but I think I've said enough. Clients, I love you. I'm gonna help you every way. And when I see it in black and white, I'm not kidding around. You will have exactly what you need. Now, I may have to try and do 78,000 things at one time, but I'll figure out how to do it, okay? We will, we will wear COVID-19 masks and we will be at the office figuring out, we will risk our lives to do it. And we will get you what you need, but I'm going to wait. And then here's the other thing. If, you know, we get you your, you know, tax return copies and all that stuff every time. So if you're just like, you know what, I just want to pull it together to be safe. Well, you can, I mean, if you, you should have them look in the old emails or whatever the case is. And right now, okay. You want to get this paycheck um, protection program loan and you don't want to get an SBA unless you don't qualify for that. So you get this through the bank, the SBA is online. If you're going online, that does not at all apply to the paychecks. All right, hey, probably no one's made it to 35 minutes, but it's probably been good for my soul. I put it together um, to help people. And uh, I'll tell you this right now, I'm loving banks.
right? I'm loving the banks that are like, now let's just figure out how we need to do it because they're there to help the client. They're not there to lord the money over the client. And if that offends you as a banker, don't even come talk to me. Don't even talk to me. Don't send me a comment. Please don't send me any clients. Don't, I don't want to do business with you. Okay. If it offends you when I say what I say is you're not looking out for the client. You're looking out for yourself on these PPP loans because it is rude. It is rude to do one thing to block a client from getting a loan. And if you think that you need extra documentation, then that is cool and that is fine and you go do it. Mind your own business, get out of mine. You don't need to ruin my Saturday by being rude to me and emailing me over and over and trying to show me the law when you don't even know what it is that you're looking at, okay? All right, I better just stop. I love you, JJ the CPA here. I love it if you subscribe to my YouTube video and then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me.